Bob Goodlatte, a Virginian. Congressman, so many questions for you, but first about this Gang of Six plan. This is the newest, the greatest, the latest, we think. We don't know. Is there any way that you would support the Gang of Six plan? Well, Cheryl, I'm glad that the uh, Gang of Six and other senators are working on this because we need to see some production from the Senate. There are a lot of concerns with it, and of course the biggest concern is we haven't seen it. We don't know uh, what it looks like in writing, what the details are. However, I would say that if they would move away from uh, uh, revenue raising to revenue neutrality, in other words, close the loopholes, deal with uh, deductions that uh, some think are unfair, uh, we can, I think, as long as you apply that to other areas of the tax code, maybe the alternative minimum tax, which is creeping down and affecting the middle class more and more, those would be the kind of things that we would have a lot to discuss. But what I think has to be kept on the table is the recognition that so far, cut, cap, and balance, the House measure, is the only solution to the debt limit crisis that has passed either body thus far. And the reason it passed the House last night was because it has attached to it a balanced budget amendment to the United States Constitution. But Congressman, the president's going to veto it. Congre he, well, President Barack Obama well, has said, down. clearly, I'm going to veto this thing. Well, look, look, here's, here's what you need to look at. First of all, the president of the United States can't veto a constitutional amendment to balance the budget because it doesn't even go to the president. If it passes the House and Senate, it goes straight to the state legislatures. With regard to the other pieces of this, I think his veto threat is unfortunate because that's the House position. We now need to see what the Senate position is so we can negotiate with them. And if you do that and attach a balanced budget amendment to it, it doesn't necessarily have to even be the one referenced last night. I introduced House Joint Resolution Number 2 earlier this year, also a balanced budget amendment that has a majority support in the House. It passed the identical language passed the House with 300 votes, 72 Democrats. Uh, back as a part of the contract with America, and it failed in the Senate by one vote. So that's what brings a lot of Republicans in the House and some Democrats who are uncomfortable with voting to raise the debt limit to have last night voted to raise the debt limit because it was attached to a balanced budget amendment. So you can't cast it aside. The president says we don't need a balanced budget amendment to do our jobs, but he has never uh, proposed a budget that balances ever during his entire two and a half years as president of the United States. So apparently we do need a balanced okay. budget amendment of the Constitution. The American people know it. More questions for you. Uh, sure. We're, bluntly, we're running out of time here. To what extent do you and your colleagues shift to let's get it done uh, instead of these, what I'm going to call symbolic measures? And, and I don't want you to take that the wrong way. I'm on your side, but let's face it. The amendment uh, to the Constitution has a low probability of being passed, certainly in time to resolve the debt ceiling. So at what point do you shift to, hey, we've got a crisis here and it needs to be solved? We, we need the balanced budget amendment to make the shift. We should pivot to a plan that brings bipartisan support because you can't get it through the Senate without Democratic support. But you can pass a balanced budget amendment, what some people refer to as a clean balanced budget amendment, like the one that almost passed in 1995, also filled in the Senate by one vote in 1997. And I don't think you should take that off the table because when you do, you lose lots of Republican members who aren't willing to vote for, eliminate, for raising the debt limit without assurance that we're bringing these uh, excessive borrowings to a close. And that's what a balanced budget amendment says to the public, and that's why they support it. 75, on that, well, 80 percent. Well, but the Senate, they but it, the they Senate has to pass it. I think that's, that, that's, that's right. the next hurdle. So the There's House. always a hurdle, so but the, the Senate is not Republican controlled. They're Democrat controlled. And it seems to me, Congressman, I only got about 20 seconds, but it seems to me that this keeps coming down to party lines. Every single piece of uh, legislation, any type of bill, comes down to party lines. When are these two parties going to come together? I think they're coming together. I've had discussions today and yesterday with Democrats. I'm going over to talk to some senators today. The balanced budget amendment needs to be kept on the table in these discussions okay. or people are going to move away from a settlement, not move together and find a bipartisan solution. It has to be bipartisan if it includes a balanced keep, budget amendment. Keep us updated, and I think it has to be bipartisan anyway. Keep us updated. Congressman we Bob will. Goodlatte. Will. Thank you very much. Keep us updated on that. We would like to see something, folks. Well, to all of you at home today, President Obama called the Gang of Six's plan a significant...